Leon. I'm Hi. Olivia. And I'm Madison. Welcome to episode 12, 12. of We're Completely, Completely Booked. I was trying to do a really weird for you, but you didn't <laughs> catch on. It's fine. Our book for this week is We've Always Lived in the Castle by, by Shirley, Shirley Jackson. Jackson. I keep missing your cues here. <laughs> I was going to give you a cue. <laughs> You're just not catching my You can go me. ahead and describe it. It's fine. Oh, Let's try to summarize, summarize this. this book. Ah, creepy. I guess that doesn't help. More specifically, these two sisters, their family died mysteriously. In, yeah. By <laughs> being poisoned at dinner, but these two survived. So the older sister, Constance, got tried for murder of the family, and the whole village thinks that she murdered her family. So Constance and her little sister, Mary Cat, live in this house on the outskirts of the village. Mm -hmm. And they almost never leave except to go into town and get food. And when they do leave, they're criticized by all the townspeople and they're harassed and it's really Ridiculed. awful. And their uncle also survived as well. Right! I forgot about him! <laughs> except for the brief amount of time spent in town, the entire setting, and a brief amount of time in the woods, yeah. the entire setting is the house, which is roughly two. I guess the woods is the castle, like the backyards of the castle. So it's so it's, it's, mostly the entire house is what it takes yes. place. Which, for 140 whatever pages, seems like it would get stale. But Jackson does a great job of putting such strange characters in the setting that the setting does not at all get stale. There's also very minute details that just kind of roll off the tongue of our main character. Uh, Mary Cat likes to describe everything to like the tiniest detail. She's observant. They try to make it like the main characters themselves are the victims, but towards the end you start to realize that they're not victims really in, they're not in a sense completely they're completely innocent. Nobody in the story is completely innocent. And so even the way Shirley Jackson sort of um, portrays characters as far as like innocent or evil or grotesque, you find out that everyone's got a little bit of ugliness in them and there really isn't anyone to necessarily root for in this story. Yeah, I think the most uplifting message you could gather from this is equality in that sense. Everybody's got ugly. Everybody's awful. Yeah. Oh, ugly. This book it ties along with other gothic literature themes. I don't think it was written during the same time as the gothic literature. No, later. This was written later from like the gothic age of reading, but if you've read books like Frankenstein or Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier or <laughs> Wuthering Heights or Jane Eyre, you'll it find feels very like that. similar language. Mm -hmm. The craziness and the stuck in the house and the society's <laughs> and it's all really weird. And that was my maniacal laugh to go with it. Sounded so similar to <laughs> Okay, no, I'm kidding. It is the same laugh. Okay. <laughs> you can tell that the author herself went through some struggles similar to this. She also wrote the short story of the lottery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Her cat's been glitching at the door for like Come 10 on, minutes. <laughs> so you can tell that the author herself went through a lot of struggles in her life based on her this writing and her short story that you may have read in school, The Lottery. Oh, in which she you know, throw stones. Yeah. Ah, it's sort of sad to become a part of her struggle. You almost feel as a reader as though she's faulting you, and you feel as if you could have done something about it, reading it. You yeah. Know, you feel like a villager. You, they're so victimized that you feel like you're doing it. By reading yeah. their story, you're prolonging exactly. their pain and suffering. You feel like yeah. it's your fault for their misfortune. Right. So although this book made me feel not very good, and it sort of creeped me out, made me quite uncomfortable, I think that was the point. So in a way, it was done well. Although I didn't totally enjoy it. Yeah. Definitely it's... not a good read for Christmas time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But that being said, it was well written. It was. So, as a compromise, we've given, given it, it a 3.7 yes. out of 5. Right. 3.7 death caps out of 5. Mm. Our next book is called <laughs> The Soul of an Octopus by Simon Montgomery. Which, by the way, if you didn't know, was the uh, novel, or was the finalist for the nonfiction National Book Award winner this past year. Nifty! Yeah! Indeed if you would like are. to give us a recommendation that doesn't suck our souls away, we really appreciate <laughs> that. Please comment below. Give us life. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> we hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving, and we will see you next week. Yeah.
please visit our website at www.wordcompletebook.com. Oh yeah, I forgot that, but we have a website too. Go there. Okay. <laughs> we have a website. Bye!